first of all, tell us about this social media blackout, um, which the club, obviously Birmingham and Swansea are doing it as well. What are you hoping comes out of this? Uh, well, I think we want to keep it in the media, first and foremost. We want people to talk about it and we're hoping that um, it gets into the right people's thinking uh, in terms of people that are above football, uh, i.e. the governments up here in Scotland and down in England as well, and something uh, big can come from it. Uh, we know we're not going to be the club or the individuals that make that difference, but I think if people stick together and collectively people can keep it, on the agenda for as long as possible. Hopefully, um, there'll be change happen sooner rather than later. Um, you mentioned the government. Are you thinking that legislation is going to be potentially going to be required to, to, to aid all your players and all those who are suffering? Well, I think um, it, it's been spoken about for long enough now. Um, and it doesn't seem like Instagram or Twitter or the social media outlets are taking any notice and they're not listening. So. I think the only way they will take note is if it goes above them. And um, probably the only people to do that are probably the government. So um, hopefully if football keep, keeps doing its thing in terms of um, speaking about it and keeping it in all the media, on the radios, on the TV, hopefully something will be done because enough's enough. Um, too many people are getting abused um, on a daily basis and um, it's not acceptable. Um, and it, it makes you frustrated and it makes you angry that um, these social media platforms are ignoring it because that's what they're doing at the end of the day. They're ignoring it and uh, they're letting it go on. Um, so we felt it was the right thing to do as, as management. We listened to our senior players and collectively we made the decision which our club have backed, um, which makes you really proud that you've got the clubs backing on something like this. And um, hopefully other clubs and individuals keep doing their own thing to keep it in the in the media spotlight as well. Gavin, go ahead, please. St Stephen, can I just ask if you've had any news back from Ryan Jack's trip to the specialist and, and just also James Tavernier, if he's close to return, if he's not back this weekend, could he face Celtic? Was there any other team news as well? I'd say he's got an outside chance, James, um, of being involved uh, against Celtic. He's still outside in a 1v1 capacity with a physio, but he's progressing pretty well. Um, I'd say he's got a small chance at the moment, so I'd say that's an outside chance. Um, in terms of Ryan, we're waiting on some news today. So uh, we've been back and forth with a, a couple of specialists over the last couple of days. He's still been doing his thing with the physios and the, the medical team here. Uh, but we're hoping for some positive news today. So the next time I speak to you guys, I should have a better update in terms of Ryan. Joe Henry, please. Hi, Stephen. Just on that, um, with James Tavernier still being out, how much of a boost is it if he's not back for that game against Celtic to have Nathan Patterson available? Well, look, we want all our players uh, fit and available, you know, especially when you're in my shoes. Um, you know, all the challenges that are in front of us, you want all your players fit, healthy and available for you. Um, obviously, we've just had news that the hearing is going to be when it is, which me makes that, you know, the COVID lads um, will be available for the next couple. Of course, that's a boost. Um, didn't expect that. But it is what it is. You know, the, them decisions are out of our control. We don't decide when um, these hearings are or when they're put in place. We, um, we wait for contact and the SFA have given us a date and we've accepted that date. So we'll deal with that as and when it comes. Ronnie, go ahead. Hi, Stephen. Uh, John Kennedy was saying yesterday at his media conference that he felt it was unfair that your uh, COVID breakers are, are able to play their matches, whereas the likes of uh, volleyball and goalie at Celtic was was dealt with them a lot quicker. What's your thoughts in reaction to that? Well, I've just said in the previous question that we don't control when them dates come or them hearings. Um, you know, we don't pick and choose when they come. Um, we wait for the SFA to get in touch with us. And um, we accept the, the, the first possible chance to do that. Um, I agree with John in terms of the um, inconsistencies uh, from the SFA because we've been speaking about that for some time now. Um, and if you're talking about obviously punishments and stuff, obviously Bolongoli left the country um, at his own will and then come back in and he trained amongst his peers and he went and played at Kilmarnock and put other people as health at jeopardy. And um, he was given a was it a three-game ban suspended? Um, 
So I agree with him in terms of the inconsistency of the Aberdeen players. Sorry, he was given a five-game ban. I think three were suspended, and I think the Aberdeen players were given. Yeah, sorry, that's right. Yeah, five. The Aberdeen guys were given three games, and they were all suspended. And then there was obviously positive COVID tests on the back of that as well. So I definitely agree with John in terms of the inconsistencies. Um, and to be honest with you, I'd probably be a bit frustrated as well uh, with him if you know good players were available to play against his team next week as well. So um, I sort of I, I feel his pain. David Edgar, please. Uh, Stephen, on that, um, when you look at, you know, for instance, Celtic's trip to Dubai, does that maybe increase your frustration when comments have been labelled? You know, I'm not frustrated. I'm not frustrated over John's comments. He's obviously well within his rights to have his own opinion. You know, he's got his own press conference and questions that are fired at him that he has to deal with himself. Um, nothing's really come of the Dubai trip. The only thing that's come of the Dubai trip is that no one else is allowed to go on a training camp. Um, so nothing's happened from that. We, we, we obviously move on from that instance. Um, but obviously, rules were broken on that trip in terms of drinking um, together. There's no social distance there on that situation. But look, the Celtic business is not really for me to talk about. My, my worry and my concerns are ranges, and we'll, we'll look forward to that hearing. And then um, we'll deal with it as and when. But... I definitely agree with John in terms of the inconsistency, especially when it comes down to punishments. I'm the only one who knows the details of our own COVID situations. And um, I think a few of the things I said got took out of context in terms of Nathan Patterson's quotes. Um, these guys have broke rules, they deserve punishments. But what we feel is if not everything's been taken into consideration because we were at the forefront in terms of making sure that we suspended these players ourselves and they missed games of football on the back of that. We took the maximum fine and we were really strong and forceful in terms of our punishments with the lads. So we're not trying to defend what they've done. Um, it was my own opinion, which I've got my right to, is that I don't think there's any consistency in terms of the outcome of the bans. Uh, I don't see why... Um, these set of players deserve the same or anything different to, to previous situations. It just seems as if the SFA are guessing in terms of punishments and um, everything's, everything's inconsistent. So that is a frustration from our point of view as well. Gabriel, go ahead, please. Hi, Stephen. Just looking ahead to the weekend's game, obviously uh, it's Hibernian. We just spoke to Phil and he said that Hibs are one of the, the toughest opponents you've had all season. What do you expect from them at the weekend? And do you think that Hibs have been possibly the toughest team you've faced all year? Um, we, we've had tough challenges off most teams, in all honesty, uh, home and away. Uh, Hibs have done fantastically well. You know, they're in third place. I'm sure they're pretty satisfied in terms of their league campaign. Um, it looks like they're obviously going to finish in the European places. They've got dangerous players. They've got a good coach who sets them up really well. Um, they're a team that come and try and play. They try and hit you. You know, they've got um, good patterns about how they play so it goes without saying you're going to have to be at your best to get the right results against Hibs and um, we have had previous tough challenges against this team and um, we have to be ready and at our best again at the weekend because this is not a team that you can take lightly or be complacent against because uh, they'll make you pay uh, Jordan Campbell please Morning Stephen um, as I news this week that Scotland um, will be open to 25% of the stadium um, for fans at the Euros. Um, it's obviously been said that the Scottish Cup final might not um, be open to fans uh, currently. How, how much would you call on the, the authorities to try and be creative, even if that meant playing at a different location to Hamden, if you could get fans back in for that game? I think everyone wants fans back in as quick as possible, but I think you'd have to respect and understand the reason behind why they make these decisions. Um, We'd love nothing better than uh, to have fans back at Ibrox uh, in, in, in as soon as possible. Um, first and foremost, we'd love to get to the cup final. I think that's the first thing. But I'm sure all the clubs and all the managers want their own supporters in the stadiums as quick as possible. Um, but I think it's great news from, from Scotland's point of view in terms of the Euro games. I think it's obviously a big breakthrough and um, a bit of light at the end of the tunnel in terms of getting supporters back in and all other sporting events. Um, there's, there's light as well. So I think that's a real big positive. But in terms of, you know, the remaining domestic games and cup competitions, I'm not really in a place to demand or ask or um, 
say anything on that. We just have to accept what it is. Andrew McLean, please. Morning, Stephen. Um, if I could just go back to the social media boycott, how encouraging would it be if you know there was a lot of Scottish clubs that all came together on this issue and and all you know did a boycott together? Do you think that would really send a, a much bigger message across as well? Uh, possibly. Um, I think every club, um, the players, the management, the boards, they're all in their own um, clubs and have got the right to make their own decisions and decide what they want to do. I know all the clubs are. Um, trying their best and working as hard as they can to, to send the right messages. Um, but yeah, I'm sure it would. Um, I know that here at the board, Stuart Robinson, speaking to all different clubs, not just up here, but down south as well, um, asking a lot of questions. We've got a meeting next week with some media, uh, social media outlets as well. So hopefully there's some positive news in the, in the near future. We felt it's the right thing to do, um, to, to stand next to our players and, and send the right message from a Rangers point of view. But we don't expect anyone um, to follow suit. We're not demanding or asking for anyone to follow suit. But if they did, I think it'd be fantastic and another strong message because it keeps people talking about it. It keeps it in the spotlight. And then hopefully it gets into the, the right people's thinking and right people's minds who can make a difference. Thank you very much, all. Uh, see you soon if you're coming. All the best. Thanks, Stephen. Good luck. Cheers, guys. Bye. Cheers. Cheers, Stephen. All the best. Yes.